Today, we're gonna to talk about equalizing. Equalizing can be hard for a number of different divers, especially beginner divers, but it is overcomable for most of us. And I believe it's something that once you start diving more and get some experience and with the tips in this video, you will be diving and enjoying and even forgetting that you need to equalize in no time. So why is equalizing needed anyways? We can get really deep and technical until Boyle's Law, but you're probably going to click off this video in no time and I'm going to lose your attention. So I'm going to get right into the nitty gritty level of it. And the gist is because of how pressure works. Being that if you are to climb a mountain or even go on an airplane, you'll notice that as the pressure goes up or down, you'll need to equalize and you can even equalize on the plane and feel the same effects that you would in diving being that the pressure changes in air affecting your body in a way that you need to adjust internally being your sinuses. So with scuba diving, the hard part is you're not in air anymore, you're in water which is significantly more dense. Just a few meters, the density of pressure that's going to be on top of you is going to be significantly more. You need to pressurize. You need to change the pressure internal to your body much more frequently than if you're hiking a mountain, climbing upstairs, or going on a flight. And those pressure changes need to be much more rapid in scuba diving. So there's a bunch of techniques that scuba divers have paved the way on, and I'm going to teach you in this video to be prepared for and make sure that you have no problem adjusting and getting used to equalizing in your future dives. Let's talk about really quick the different parts you need to equalize because it may not be super apparent to start. First being, and the most important, is your lungs. So your lungs actually need to equalize too, but these are the easiest to equalize. And all you have to do is make sure you're continuously breathing. So as you've always heard a lot of scuba divers say, don't hold your breath. This is one of the reasons you're not constantly trying to make sure that you're equalizing as you're breathing in and out. So if you are holding your breath, the goal is to not. If you ever are holding your breath for whatever reason, a lot of people do it when they're taking photos. And I know I will advise to never hold your breath as well, because if you are holding your breath, the goal will be to never change your depth. You have to really know your depth and be as stable as possible. If your depth is changing and you're holding your breath, you could be in a lot of danger. With that said, if your depth is stable, then you don't need to equalize. And for those driving in a dry suit, you also have to equalize your suit as well. Otherwise, you will get what is called a suit squeeze which can actually be quite dangerous. So all you have to do is add a little bit of air to your suit to equalize that out as well. And there's also mass squeeze. And for anyone who's ever dove down very quick, pressurized their goggles at the surface, and you'll find that your goggles are uncomfortably tight. And it can even give you a huge headache over time. So all you have to do is loosen and let a little bit of air in after you've changed depth to some degree, and this will loosen up your goggles. Even if you have to let it flood them a little bit, you just purge them out, and this will equalize the air in your goggles. And now let's talk about what most people commonly think of when you need to start equalizing, and that is your ears and your sinuses throughout your face. These are most important because there's a bunch of sacs in there, and these can rupture and explode becoming fatal or permanent damage to your body. And nobody wants that, but these are easily avoidable. And there's a bunch of different techniques we'll get into shortly of how to equalize effectively. The first things to get into is equalizing early and often. Being if you're on the surface, then you should go ahead and equalize right before your dive. This helps clear your sinuses and prepares your body for equalization. As you're descending, just continue to equalize down to the depth that you're going. The problem becomes, if you wait too long, it becomes harder and harder to equalize. Since the more pressure that has been building since your last equalization, the harder it's going to be. So if you're going down and it's starting to hurt and you continue to go down and you can't equalize, you're doing it wrong. This is gonna be disastrous. The goal is to either stop, wait, try and equalize, and if you still can't equalize, go back up 
because that's going to make it easier to equalize. And then once you've equalized, then you can continue down. Going back to what I said earlier, if you just are constantly equalizing all the way down, you won't have a problem. You just continue to equalize until you get to your plan depth. That's the best way. And take it from me. When I first started diving, I was having a miserable time. I was taking much longer than my wife and my friends. I was the slowest one. And it was kind of stressful. I was like, why am I having such a hard time? In retrospect, thinking back, it's because I was waiting way too long to equalize. I would get to the point where it was super painful. I couldn't equalize. And fortunately, I wasn't dumb enough to continue down. I would take some time and I would eventually get it, but I would have to go up and it would just take a lot longer than necessary. Over time, I learned to do better and equalize frequently and often. When you first start out, scuba diving is kind of nerve wracking. There's a lot of stuff going on and there's lots of things that you have to keep track of and it can be a little overwhelming. And that kind of adds a little bit of conscious or subconscious stress to you. And this tensity is actually going to make it harder to equalize. One of the tricks is the more you dive, the more you equalize, the more comfortable you're going to be because it's kind of like driving a car. The more you drive, the more comfortable you get. You don't panic about all the small things you become a little bit more automated. And same with scuba diving. Eventually equalizing, you will do it almost without thinking. You won't even really worry about it ever again. Even when you're doing negative dives where you're basically going straight down from the boat and you go down as fast as possible, you'll just be equalizing from the very start all the way down. I usually do the Valsalva technique from the very start and this is just the base technique. I'll get into more detail shortly. This will be just the thing that will power you through those quick descents and usually what you'll start with and it's usually the thing that I will rely on whenever I need to make sure equalizing is a priority. Even negative dives won't be a problem. Don't expect to be doing a negative dive as a beginner and expect to be having a hard time with equalizing because it's going you're going to be tense. I don't think there's any way to say like, oh, don't stress out about it. You just have to dive more and you will eventually start com being calm. And this calmness will make equalizing easier. So if you are a beginner, make sure to just stick with it. It will get better in time and eventually you won't be worrying about it. If you are feeling tense, just continue to practice, continue to build your skills and that will eventually no longer be an issue. And with that said, let's get into some equalizing tips. off of what I've already said, make sure to take some extra time. There's some breathing techniques and just find you're at peace with yourself. This will just make equalizing a lot easier and probably your air consumption as well. So there's lots of benefits. Address any concerns with your dive team beforehand and enjoy the dive. It will make equalizing so much better. Also, dive in a way where you're equalizing at the rate that you feel comfortable with. Being that, don't just jump into doing negative dives or doing a quick descent. Don't force those kind of things. If you're feeling any kind of pain, you're going too fast. As I mentioned, you want to start equalizing before the dive and as soon as you hit the water, start equalizing on the way down. And don't stop equalizing. Just continue to descend at a rate that is not forced. If your boat has a line to the bottom, you can use that line. And sometimes it's even preferred, especially if there's current, just use the line and walk yourself with your hands to the bottom and continue to equalize along the way. And this is just a super controlled ascent. And even if there's current, you'll be able to get down to the bottom with as little resistance and make sure everyone else can join you in the same way sometimes you'll find if there's no line or people aren't using a line they might get blown away and people can have some technical difficulties or anything else but if everyone's using a line it just makes it easier and you can go at a rate that you feel comfortable with without any issues in the worst case you can't equalize if you can ascend a little bit and try again and keep ascending a little bit more and a little bit more until you can equalize and then you can go down if you really can't equalize it might be a good idea to abort. Some issues that a lot of people may have is with their sinuses. And this has happened to me before where I've had colds, 
some congestion, and this is gonna happen to everyone. And the general patty advice is don't dive at all. And I would also go ahead and say to do this for your own safety. But if you choose to try and dive, the main thing is to be even more diligent about equalizing. I can say from experience, I have dove with congestion and a cold, and I wouldn't advise it. It probably took me at least two to three times longer to equalize. But once I go down to my planned depth and I stay at that depth, no problem. And the main thing is as you're changing depth, if you continue to go down, even during your dive, you'll have to continue to equalize. So make sure you're continuously doing that and you just have to really change your depth at a much slower rate than you would if you weren't congested. And if you feel uncomfortable with this at all, I'd advise you not to dive. And if you are feeling congestion, or you're having trouble equalizing, make sure you just communicate with your team. If everyone knows you're having some difficulties and you tell them on the surface, they'll be waiting for you. They'll have the patience. They won't swim away without you if they know you're just having some difficulty and it's gonna take you a little bit longer. To make it a little bit easier, one thing to note is if your head is positioned towards the surface of the water, like I am standing here, it will make it easier than if you're trying to go horizontal or your head is down. Both those positions will make it harder to equalize. So if you're having difficulty, make sure your head is upright and try to clear your passageways, keep them straight, and this may help you equalize as well. And speaking of sickness and congestion, which if you dive enough, it's bound to happen at some point, there is also another thing you have to contend with that could affect your ability to equalize, and that is the dreaded ear infection. So when you're scuba diving, there is just lots of organisms living in the water that will just have a party in your ear. Just like a, a wild raving party. That causes lots of issues to your eardrum, including infection, which is going to be this stinging pain and it's going to hurt. It's happened to me on several occasions. I usually try to do some of the eardrops and try to at least get the water out by tapping the head or I've seen some people hop up and down. But one thing I can advise not to do is try and stick any kind of cotton swabs in your ears. This could only make things worse because the earwax in your ear is actually a natural protectant to your inner ear. A cotton swab will actually remove all that earwax and now the party is going to get out of control and probably just give you an ear infection even faster. We'll keep that precious earwax and instead you can explore some things like I mentioned which is the different solutions and I've heard solutions like 50% vinegar and 50% alcohol. There's a whole bunch of stuff like a diver's ear or there's a bunch of different aftermarket products which I haven't really tried and they can be a little pricey and I'm not entirely sure I, I've really ever needed them. And I have done lots of dives in sequence without too much issue although I did mention I've caught an ear infection at least twice. One thing I've started doing and I think it's helped quite a bit is I use this little a ear blower, but it doesn't blow air. It actually acts as a vacuum, but it squeezes and it sucks the air and moisture out of your ear. So it basically creates a vacuum when you squeeze and then it kind of allows you air to blow in reverse out of vacuums the stuff out of your ear without getting the wax out. So that should be helpful for drying your ear and that should prevent the ear infection, which will either ruin your trip or it's going to make you equalizing hell on earth. And it's also something I can't advise, but you will do what you will do. And I've also done diving with ear infection. So take it for what you will if possible, but uh, I won't advise it. Okay, let's talk about the different techniques to equalize. First, kick it off with the most common one, the Valsalva technique, which is probably what everyone will learn when they're going through open water. And it's the most simple and it's probably the most useful. It's the one I often use when I need to reliably clear the air. However, there is one specific thing that you should be aware of, and that as a beginner especially, if you're not clearing often with this technique, the longer it is that you take to equalize, 
the harder it's going to become. Because this technique uses a certain amount of tubes called the Eustachian tubes that will effectively allow you to equalize in this method. However, if you're not equalizing or you're having trouble equalizing, this technique becomes harder and harder to use. So if you're failing to equalize with it can effectively backfire on you and not be useful at all. The means to mitigate that is to ascend a little bit up to like one meter, try again and keep ascending one meter until you can successfully equalize and then start descending again but definitely not continue descending and try to ascend with that method until you get a successful equalization or trying different equalization methods. So just to give you an idea of what this is going to look like, and I'm sure you'll learn it, but the goal is to pinch your nose and you can try this on the plane too. It's You can try this right now. It's not going to do anything, but you should feel kind of a nice relieving pop. That pop or click that you'll feel is going to feel really good. So you're gonna pinch your nose like this and then breathe. You're gonna close your mouth and breathe out. So you're probably not gonna see this, but I'm gonna breathe, push out with my breath and it's gonna cause this pressure in my face and that's gonna help the tubes and the sinuses equalize to my current pressure, which right now I'm not changing elevation, so it's not gonna do anything. And I could feel it in my ears for sure. So going back to as a beginner, if you are hitting the point where your Eustachian tubes are closing up and you're no longer able to use the Valsalva method, or it's getting harder to use, there is another technique called the Toynbee technique, which will help you actually recover your Eustachian tubes when they're closed. And that is swallowing. So swallowing is the technique to keep those Eustachian tubes open. And the Toynbee technique basically involves you pinching your nose and then swallowing. So it, it's hard for you to see this on the camera, but give it a try at home. Pinch the nose again and swallow. And this will help open those Eustachian tubes. It's going to be less than Valsalva, but you'll get a little bit of equalization. But if you're doing this frequently and often, this helps. The only con against this is you need a little bit of saliva. So you should be drinking lots of water on your surface time to make sure you're well hydrated. So that shouldn't be an issue. But if there are cases where you're having dry mouth, this becomes a little bit hard. And next, someone had the bright idea to take the benefits of the Valsalva method, which uses your station tubes, and the benefits of the Toynbee to open the Eustachian tubes. And let's go ahead and combine those together. And now we have the Lowry method. So it's basically just combine the other two. And this works effectively for a lot of people. You're still going to pinch your nose and you're going to swallow at the same time. And this should help when equalizing is becoming particularly troublesome and you're having a hard time. So give it a try. And now we're going to talk about something where you're not pinching your nose. And so these techniques can be a little bit harder to use if you are descending quickly. If you're equalizing frequently and often from the start, these are viable, but you will have to be very calm, very relaxed, and descending a little bit slower. Probably not useful for a negative dive, but a nice calm descent these will still be viable and you won't have to pinch your nose. So if you need your hands free, these are probably some good options. Or if you're going down a descent line, perfect. The voluntary tube opening. Now this one doesn't require pinching the nose, but is a little bit hard for you to see. But basically it's going to require me to move my jaw all around, forward, backward, side to side. And you're trying to create that eustachian tube opening by just moving the jaw around. It helps to move your neck back, look up, and then move your jaws. It doesn't require my hand. Like you're chewing, but very wide and pronounced movement. You won't get the big popping feeling that you will with the Valsalva technique, but you will start feeling the pressure relief, and this can help. Some people say just pretend you're chewing, and this can still be an effective means of equalizing. In the same vein as the voluntary tube technique is the frenzel technique, which is going to be, again, hard to show you, but it takes your tongue uh, and you take your tongue and you press it to the top of your mouth hard and you take your jaws and you clench down fairly hard. They should be firm. Push that tongue up there as hard as you can to the roof of the mouth and you should feel some equalization from this. 
Now, I will say this is more advanced technique and I've never really had a lot of success with it myself, but I think free divers tend to swear by it. And again, it can be an effective means of clearing and equalizing without using your hands on your nose and can be especially effective, especially miss your dive. So one of that is once you've gone down to your main planned dive depth and you see some squirrel or turtle or something and you want to dive a little bit deeper, you're going to have to start equalizing again, but you should be kind of calm and gently going down to that depth. And during this time, these techniques where you don't need to be pinching your nose are quite effective. And the last technique I'm going to go over is similar to Valsava, so you're still going to pinch your nose. But if you've ever been on a plane or equalized in a normal manner, you probably noticed that yawning actually is very effective at helping you equalize. It's almost like a natural way that the body tries to equalize, but it's kind of hard to do when you have a regulator in your mouth. <laughs> However, someone had the bright idea to make this technique and try and bring it to scuba diving where you will try and pinch your nose like the Valsalva with your reg in your mouth and you have to be careful of this to not spit your regulator out, so don't do that. And without spitting your regulator, you have to open the mouth around the regulator and try and push a yawn. This is kind of combining that voluntary tube opening where you're kind of moving the jaw around. That's what the yawn is doing. It's going to open those eustachian tubes and you're using the Valsalva as a baseline to help the equalization happen. So it can be effective. And lastly, I'm going to just throw this in there because sometimes just swallowing can actually equalize as well. So this is not a fast means. If you're looking for techniques where you don't need to pinch your nose and you're down just making small adjustments to your depth, just swallowing is actually could be effective means of equalization, but it's going to be slow and it's going to be for more micro depth changes. So this is often what the technique I use most of my diving. And when I'm going off the boat or from a, a decently quick descent or even a negative dive, I usually use a Valsalva or a twin B technique depending if I'm having a hard time. But usually Valsalva is just enough to get me down to where I need to go. 99% of the time. And this works for me. However, my wife is quite a bit different. She uses more of the Toynbee method and this works more effectively for her. In fact, she prefers it much more than the Valsalva method. So what is important is you might have to take all of the suggestions here and experiment around with them and find which works for you because we're all made a little bit differently. And these techniques, there's not a one size fits all for all of us and there's no one that is better. Whichever one works and helps you equalize effectively and faster at different depths and different micro adjustments is what's important for you. So learn them, practice them, and experiment what works, what doesn't work, and as long as you're equalizing and you have no trouble equalizing, you're doing a great job. You're going to be equalizing like a pro in no time. Once you get the tips I went over in this video down, you'll have no trouble and equalizing will be automated and built in. And you're going to be seeking new challenges and new heights. In this video, I talked a little bit about negative diving. If you're interested in trying negative diving, usually you have to go somewhere with either current or rough waters. And I know just a place to practice in a safe environment and a super enjoyable environment. And some of the most legendary diving on this planet, Komodo Islands. And I made a video on it and I suggest you check that out next. It's going to be linked up here and until next time.